everybody smart thing so has over a hundred million citizens off the grid and more than any other country in the world and even where the grid could be available guys um you know the supply it's very unpredictable you know to bring it now to take it out in the next minute but we need to really go beyond complaining ah nepa 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 to like doing something about it and that's why power solutions is here and i've been joined by two gentlemen first my co host Weba Boar. Great guy. He's joining us live now. Vice Guy. Weba, how are you? I'm good. Great, great. I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. So, um, you do the honors. I told him a lot about you already. I told him even uh, some of his statements. You, you once said that every day should be Women's Day. I just told him. I just, <laughs> just in case. But let's, let's get into it. We have a special guest. It would be nice for you to introduce our amazing guest today as we start Power Solutions. All right, you bet. So our guest today is Trey Gerard. He's the CEO of Renuvia Solar. Uh, Renuvia is, is an American solar company, and we had a, we have an American guest calling in from Atlanta today. Wow, uh, in wow. In honor of D July 4th weekend. Um, Hi. So Trey, <laughs> happy, happy 4th of July. What were the celebrations like this year? It must have been a bit different. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. Mm. Uh, they were they were a bit subdued. Uh, the, the large... Uh, gatherings uh, in public places that people are accustomed to with the fireworks were pretty much all canceled. Um, but uh, it was it was a little bit nice. The neighborhoods were full of energy, which is the way I remembered it growing up. So when people used to spend time in the backyards with family and, and doing less planned events um, is what really happened this year, which was which was actually kind of nice. It's the way I remembered remember doing it growing up. You didn't feel like you had to be going somewhere and paying for something to do something special you just just enjoyed it with your with your family great looks like a great great celebration over there but let's get back to i mean power solutions conversation i mean what's your background trey by the way hi to you and um, why did how did you end up in the solar sector my background is is varied uh, i actually started with a biotechnology company a company that made devices to treat your heart if it wasn't beating correctly and I, I did that for several years and and it led me into the uh to the mid 90s and it seemed like everybody between the ages 18 and 30 in the mid 90s was working for a company with a dot com behind it hmm. this weird proliferation this thing called the internet was happening and uh, i was kind of taking over the world so i was one of those people Worked for an internet company and um, benefited from that. It was one of the one of the few that I guess kind of made it through the hype and actually did something afterwards. But um, that was a good experience. Taught me a lot. Um, it led me to a, a private equity group, which is kind of you know it's taught me how to uh, value companies, uh, raise capital, start companies, acquire them, uh, and grow them. I did that for a lot of years, and it kept me moving around um, constantly. Uh, and, and when we sold our portfolios of, of technology companies, gave me a chance to kind of look around a little bit, uh, t t decompress. Uh, I had a young family at the time uh, and look around and decide you know, what I wanted to get involved in and, and something that actually I felt like made a difference. Um, I made an investment, a couple of investments in the renewable space and ended up um, wrapping a company around the investments and taking as much advantage as we as we could from the tax benefit that had been enacted in 2007. So that's how Renuvia started um, in the U.S. and we bounced around to the various states that had the most aggressive incentives and learned how to develop solar, everything from you know what kind of products to buy to how to work with corporations. Wow, great. So, so just just to jump on that, so you you, you know you started in the U.S. You initially focused just on the U.S. market. Uh, and how has that market evolved over the years? I know in the U.S. it sort of comes up and comes down, I guess, depending on the administration to some extent. But is solar a pretty common choice for an American business or household now? 
It, it is now. Um, the massive price decrease has really pro pro propelled all three sectors, being utility, residential, and commercial. So when this tax credit was enacted, it was kind of architected to give a single digit return. But with the price drop, uh, now it's, it's, it's high in the double digits. So that, a couple with the, the decrease in the perceived technology risk from the corporations and the, and the residential section has really propelled the market in the U.S. and grown it substantially. Um, I really would like to know what made you decide to get into the solar business in Africa, uh, Trey, and um, why Minigrades in particular? Well, um, this, uh, again, going back to this tax credit, it was set to sunset and expire on 2016 initially. So uh, we started looking for markets that, that worked independent of incentives. Mm -hmm. Uh, we landed in Latin America and some of the South Pacific Islands originally, but um, we were introduced to a commercial project in Nairobi originally for our first project in um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And um, we were focused on the same sector we were in the U.S., but, uh, but we, we, were, we were asked to perform a solar microgrid feasibility study in Kenya, partially funded by the, United, the, the U.S. TDA. Um, a division of the U.S. government, so uh, that that's what opened our eyes to the to the to the need in the off-grid space and also the overall commercial opportunity, and it really kind of turned our focus to um, to that particular sector. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so, and and so you didn't end up going to Latin America, is that what you're saying? You just went to Africa. Uh, we had, no, we 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 had uh, we worked in Latin, we worked in Uruguay in Latin America okay. for two years, working on a utility scale project there and and developed it um, um, and all the way to fruition and worked with a Spanish and Chinese company in development of it. Okay, all right. So now um, now back to Africa. So so you, you said you came into Africa initially sort of on a commercial project. Then you, you had some USDA funding and, and did some feasibility studies. But in the end, you seem to have picked the toughest places imaginable, in that, well, almost the toughest place imaginable in Africa to kick off both the Victoria Island, Islands in Lake Victoria, sorry, not Victoria Island, but islands in Lake Victoria oh, in East Africa, um, and then the Niger Delta in Nigeria. So what what pushed you in that direction? I mean, most, you know, solar companies would find a nice, easy project maybe in Lagos or Nairobi or, or Accra, and you chose these, these pretty difficult to get to locations. What was the what was the background to that? Hmm. Well, we um, during this feasibility study, several of the, um, the sites that were evaluated were in the counties uh, that, that made up some of the islands on Lake Victoria. So we were very familiar with them. But then more importantly than that, we felt that from what we knew about the space and then knowing what we, the, the financing challenges, we felt it was important to, um, to demonstrate uh, success in an area that was the, uh, of the highest need these islands, the islands um, had no eligibility at all for grid extension ever. You know, KPLC wasn't going to show up and put generators in the islands. And then also from the standpoint of demonstrating that we could do this, you know, we, 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 we know that we could uh, demonstrate we could build solar on top of a warehouse in New Jersey, but we needed to show um, other stakeholders that we could execute in, in very remote areas and logistically challenging areas. So. For those reasons, um, we decided to start with, uh, you know, with the more challenging, the most, some of the most challenging remote areas that that were, you know, in need. All right, good. In so, case you, so that was, sorry, that was in East Africa though. But then, how come in Nigeria you chose the Niger Delta? Oh uh, yeah, well, some of the same reasons. So, um, our country manager. Chris Eberware is from uh, is from Ware and uh, had a lot of was very well connected and very very much understood the need in a lot of the remote areas in the Niger Delta. So he educated us on why he felt like this was the best place for us to start. Uh, and some of the same reasons, some of the same proof of concept, um, proof of ability reasons we did that in the islands in, in East Africa. We wanted to start our endeavor in Nigeria and in in some of the remote communities in the Niger Delta. 
Well, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Nigeria's number one for talk, Nigeria Info 99.3, and we are on Par Solutions. We're having a conversation with the CEO of Renuvia. He's a trade, Jared. Uh, Jared, and he's talking to us about his uh, solar solution right here. And uh, most people hear about um, value adding uh, um, outfits like yours, and they don't get to tell, they hear the story. So it'd be nice to to hear from you, Trey. Um, tell us about the journey of setting up an operation here in Nigeria. Uh, has it been more or less complicated than what you found in East Africa? Um, it, it's been similar. I mean, I think we benefited from our experience in East Africa, um, understanding some of the corporate compliance and regulation and setting up a new entity. But you know, the, this, this USTDA grant was, was really helpful in, in mitigating some of the risk entering new markets for, for a small company like ours mm -hmm. and, um, and to give us confidence to you know, initially risk our capital as well as competence to convince others to risk theirs so <clears throat> Nigeria was um, was as straightforward as anywhere that we we set up new operations I mean corporate compliance is you know sometimes pretty much all the time challenging and what we've learned is you need to identify good representation um, and it can help help guide you in those you kind know, of those, those the corporate compliance sector and and uh, and you know, make sure that you stay within the lines okay F pretty fair okay okay and then um how did you pick your first two locations i mean i know you're doing mini grids planned for throughout the niger delta but you picked two in bielsa again not the obvious first choice um Oloibri and Ak akipilai i hope i'm pronouncing those right and and how did you pick those and then how did you get the communities on board uh, to, to be ready and willing to, 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 to host your mini grids? Um, well, again, we a lot of guidance from our country manager. Um, and and, I, and I'll tell you, one of the reasons why we landed on Oliberia and Akapalai is uh, some of these areas uh, are, again, there are, uh, have no connectivity to a disco or the grid and, and for, for the most part aren't eligible for it and, 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 and and decades out so uh, and these these communities were uh, in specific Liberia where were some of the uh, are, are amongst the oil concessions so intuitively one would think um, energy would be plentiful there because you know you're you're uh, one of the one the, the most known energy sources there being oil is um, is coming from the area, but uh, ironically, this you know, this this community is not uh, not with power at all. They're only running off um, individual generators. So, um, the again, the, what led us there was the specific need of this particular community, and and Akapalai, and uh, and that it was a focus of um, um, an area where that uh, it. It had been in the spotlight, being the first community where oil was covered in Nigeria, yet it didn't have any power source. So that's what led us to originally starting with those two. Well, I know a lot of Nigerians listening right now in Lagos and across uh, the country, uh, those who are joining online, will be uh, wondering a few questions, and I hope uh, my next line of questions would be able to answer some of the doubts. Um, uh, tell us about the mini grids that are now operating. Like you mentioned, that of course uh, we've also mentioned that a mini grid operating, and um, how do they work? And you know, what does what what does it what does it mean to the community? And uh, what are some of the uh, examples of impacts, just so people can have uh, the scope of what's going on with the mini grids? Yeah, the um, the mini grids are comprised of solar um, plus storage, being battery, and and these these two we uh, we have diesel backup because okay. this isn't a perfect science yet. I mean, we're we're me we're me um, measuring what we believe is the demand of the community the best we can. But right now, these communities have been running off individual generators or sometimes community generators. And uh, we wanted to make sure that our power systems performed per the community expectations, which is why we put a diesel backup. We don't want to be in the diesel business, but we, we, want, to, we want to perform for the stakeholders and make sure that, uh, 
that we're pr providing a satisfactory service. So um, the majority of the power is generated from the sun and uh, what excess power we have during the day that's not consumed is stored and then the community uses that at night. Um, some of the uh, impact, the biggest impact that we felt right away is, is, uh, is productivity increases. Mm -hmm. A lot of, whether it's an individual, uh, whether a small commercial enterprise or, um, or residential, if you're having to wait for power from a community generator, or if you're having to wait for fuel for, for a, a, a small generator that's powering your house, and sometimes it doesn't work, and sometimes fuel's not available, you can accomplish what you need right then, and, it, and, it, and it's a costly endeavor to have to wait. So having affordable and reliable power ready 24-7 is, is extremely impactful in that, in that regard, and that leads to uh, increased savings and increased income for businesses and savings for individuals, which leads to improved quality of life. So that's, that's one category. Another one is health. Um, in Olaberry, they, they're, uh, there was a, a new health center that was just funded. Um, and we are re really excited and honored that our system is going to be um, powering that health center, which is very impactful for the community. All right, I can see a couple of people sending messages already and asking some questions, but let me let Weba take the next one before I see if uh, our audience have uh, questions for you or Weba or anyone. All right, good. So Trey, and uh, how, how supportive has the Nigerian government been? I know there's some programs that they've, they've put out there, but but how have how helpful have they been to you? I mean, how supportive have they been with the Renuvia journey in Nigeria? Well, uh, the government's been great uh, from regulation standpoint. I mean, this is the first country that uh, a microgrid developer can actually forecast anything, really. The regulators have really moved out of the way. Um, They've, they've enacted regulation that, that allows permitting to, base, uh, to be extremely efficient. So really, in essence, which is the important part, if, if, you're, if you are in agreement with the community, which is really the most important part from the standpoint of who you are, how you're gonna enact this, where you're gonna put it, how you're connecting to the community, and what you're gonna charge, then the regulators are saying that, please develop, mm -hmm. we need this, we need help from the private sector, so, so they listened to the private sector. They enacted regulation that allowed um, this to happen in an efficient manner and, and with some velocity. So uh, they've been, you know, the Nigerian government has actually um, got ahead of this and put some real thought into it and listened to the other stakeholders and, and put the structure in place to make this work. All right, good in case you're well, just joining again. Uh, we were just a moment. We are talking, lighting up the Niger data. And uh, we, of course, uh, have this conversation with the CEO of uh, Renuvia and Astray Jared. And he said a whole lot about the mini greeds. And I have a question here coming in via our WhatsApp uh, uh, portal uh, saying, uh, what is the capacity of these mini greeds? And um, yeah, there are two questions, actually, but you could respond to that first before I take the next one uh, before Weber comes on again. Yeah, the capacity is is generally designed around what the community need is. So, the good thing, the the the, uh, the most advantageous aspect of these mini grids is unlike the solar home systems, which which do a lot of good and there's a place. Mm. The mini grids scale with the individual and the community. So, if you start with a capacity that works um, as lifestyle changes, as as uh, commu commercial entities change, and businesses are started. The, the system simply scales. Uh, you add more panels, you add more battery, and you can uh, you can accommodate whatever the load is. And the individual is not made to spend more money. They just buy more power as they need it. There's mm -hmm. no upfront cost that they're having to put forth for additional materials or batteries. Okay. They don't have to manage materials that are broken or stolen sometimes. They just buy power when they need it. Great. Fantastic. I, I, think I will let Weber go now. But at the point where you talked about uh, the supportiveness of Nigerians and the government, I think we needed to give a shake as to that. Well, this, this is what we call Shekere. I don't know if you know what it is. You're probably missing this for the first time. It's called Shekere. So that's what we do when we try. We, uh, if you've done well, we say well done to you. So maybe at the end of this conversation, I would do this for you. But this one is for Nigerians for being supportive. 
So Weba, um, right. you should have the next question. I'm glad I got one. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, so Trey, I think just to build on that, it, it's important for listeners to hear this because yeah. I think we're we're often very negative about our government in Nigeria, yeah. and and this is, you know, what one area where I feel like the Nigerian government has has done really well, mm. um, because there's also some funding right from the Nigerian Electrification Program. Yeah, uh, that's an extremely material part of this. So. Um, there's funding and the, the, the Rural Electrification um, Association has, uh, agency has, is working with Rural Bank and there's a performance based grant. So, um, and, and it's, it is, uh, it's allowing um, the developers to, to, to put forth these grids, uh, develop the grids and actually charge a price that works with the community. So, um, the, the performance-based grants are absorbing a significant percentage of the overall capex, and the REA has been um, again just I keep using this word, but efficient, um, okay. and they, they, to to make this process happen in, in, in a way that's it's going to happen quickly and not over you know decades. Mm-hmm. All right, if you have a question, just maybe we'll take one or two calls. I see the phone lines buzzing, and um, uh, we will take just one or two uh, comments from uh, the audience listening. And you can call 0700-993-993-993. Or you can just uh, send us a tweet at Nigerian for fm Lagos, and uh, we would uh, take your comment and your call. Well, let's uh, wait for that call, those calls to come in. As I can see, they're being screened right now. Uh, my next question, of course, would be, what's next, really, for uh, Renewvia? And uh, where are your mini grids going up? What's next, indeed? I know if you got the question. Um, what's next for Renuvia um, right now? All right, yes. Uh, I, I'm not. I didn't quite get that question. Okay, what is next for Renuvia? Oh, what? Yeah, absolutely. What's next for you? What's where? Where else are your mini grids going up? What else? Do you have plans to have more of these mini grids in other parts of the country, the continent? What's next for you? Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, was, um, the connection dropped for a second. Okay. So we have a we have an aggressive plan. Um, we have a plan to build one thousand microgrids. One thousand years, and that might seem wow. That might seem lofty, uh, but the demand is there. You know, according to what you're reading and what source you're looking at. The, just in Nigeria alone, today, there's over 10,000 microgrids that are needed to support the demand in these remote communities. Hmm. That doesn't include other countries. So uh, so in, in short, we have an aggressive plan and we've been working on that for, for a few years now and we wanna, we wanna build a large um, off-grid uh, utility and, and, and it's gonna, you know, we, we wanna build thousands of the microgrids but specifically our plan includes a, a thousand microgrids in the next seven years all right great um we were um uh, well we our time is fast spent already looking at it right now so uh we should be wrapping up in just a moment uh before i take your last uh, comments let's just keep our word let's see who's on the line hi good morning welcome to power solutions good morning my question to mr weber is this Considering how far the Nigerian government has spent in making sure that we have a, a, a level light in Nigeria, I want to ask, will he say that the country, the government have done pretty well in making sure that we have a power in Nigeria as it's supposed to be? Thank you very much. Thank you. He's asking, considering the investments in making sure that Nigeria is lit up, would you say that the government has done pretty well? All right, Trey, I'm not sure. Could you hear that? I couldn't hear that. Yeah, so so the the question was, um, considering the investments the Nigerian government is making in power, um, are they sort of on the right track? And I guess in your case, if you can speak from the off-grid perspective, not the on-grid. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're definitely on the right track. Again, uh, you know, the government was looking to the the private sector to help solve this problem, and uh, they're they're on a better track than anywhere in the continent. Wow, that's that's quite impressive to say. Really, really impressive to hear. I most I know most Nigerians will be like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> You need a shake. You need a yes, shake ab again. absolutely. <laughs> but I would, I would want Trey to pronounce it the way we call it here. It's shekere, shekere. Could you try that? Shekere. Great, great. Another one for you. <laughs> so, gentlemen, <laughs> our, our time is fast spent. I wish you could stay there all day. I mean, looking at your faces alone is inspiring, but we have to go. So, uh, what would be your parting shots, both of you? Uh, let me just let uh, Weaver take it from here, and then I just shut up. So, yeah, so Trey, I mean, you're saying a thousand mini grids for Renuvia in the next seven years in Nigeria, correct? Yes. Well, yes. Seven years in Nigeria and, and other places, but Nigeria has the highest growth projection simply because right now the structure that, Ni that Nigeria has put in place. All right. So I think that's very good news for us to end with yeah. that Renuvia, uh, and, and it's one of many countries that are looking at opportunities like this are going to be lighting up hundreds and maybe up to a, a thousand towns, small towns in all over Nigeria wow. with solar. So that, so that even while everyone is so focused on fixing the grid, um, in many cases, it's going to be these sorts of off-grid communities that get power first. So thank you very much, Trey. Uh, thank you for taking the risk and jumping into Nigeria and, and also for being so excited and bullish about Nigeria. Um, it's 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 really um, inspirational, and I and I hope that you will be the first, and that many others will also follow and come in and and try and do what you are trying to do. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, my pleasure. I can't wait to get back there. I'm looking forward to these travel bans being lifted. Great. Right. That's it, Weber. Thank you again for being a part. Next week we'll be here again with yet another interesting guest. And don't forget to join us at Happus Eleven for another episode of Power Solutions. Well, from this side is au revoir, on va se voir alors. In other words, bye for now. We'll see you some other time. <laughs> Ciao. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, Collins. Have a great week. And you too. Thanks, Collins. Absolutely. Cheers. So that's much we have. Let's pick some bills. After that, you'll be listening to the news and that will be it for me. Wouldn't you rather stay tuned? My name is Collins. Take care.